Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. The subject is Orioles. Uh, getting a lot of questions now. It's early June, and the spring fury, fur fury, just excitement of looking out your window and getting to see this uh, in the backyard uh, has slowed down a bit. Quite a bit uh, for a lot of us. Some of it is ended completely, uh, but the the spring migration and Baltimore Orioles gets us all fired up because these are they're beautiful and we get to see them. And not only Baltimore Orioles, of course, we you know the Orchard Orioles uh, I, I put in appearance for a lot of you, depending upon your habitat around there. Uh, then we uh, you guys out west, the hooded Orioles uh, it, it, eating on the jelly. And of course, the, uh, out west, also the Bullock's Oriole. Uh, it, it, you know that excitement in spring really gets us going and gets us all excited. And then all of a sudden, uh, they're either totally gone, like in my case, or uh, for a lot of you, they slow down. And if you watch my videos, and, and you know when we talk about Orioles, I I recommend that you transition during this time from jelly to uh, mealworms, because what's happening is your Orioles, as, as you might expect, are out uh, building nests and uh, laying eggs, having babies, uh, yeah, going through the nesting process. And yes, during this process, during the nesting process, the adults will come down and they'll gobble some jelly up for energy and keep going back. Uh, and it, But if you put out mealworms, they will love that even more. Uh, and especially once those young hatch, they, they'll come in and take advantage of that free insect uh, supply for them. Um, remember when we talk about nesting uh, and we, we talk about our resident birds like cardinals and chickadees and nuthatches, those birds have stayed here all winter. They've already completed one nesting cycle, and there are a lot of them already in their second nesting cycle. Well, Orioles are inter, you know, international migrants, uh, 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 tropical migrants, as we call them. They go down into the tropics for the winter, and then they return here. And their window of nesting is uh, pretty short compared to uh, a lot of birds. They come in, and once they build that nest, they lay the eggs, they, they have their babies, they raise their babies, they get out of here in a hurry. Uh, and I read recently that uh, there's no better example of that than uh, the orchard orioles. They, they have what's considered one of the shortest stays here in North America uh, just during their nesting season. In other words, they get here, they lay their eggs, they have their, their, their nest, raise their young, and boom, they, they migrate south very quickly. So their window of presence in our areas is very, very short. Now, Baltimore's don't uh, leave that early, but they certainly uh, don't stick around very long. Um, we always say that by mid-July in our area, the Kansas City region, now you guys may be north or south, so vary it by that, but uh, the male Baltimore Orioles leave fairly quickly, usually by like mid-July. The, the adult females will leave shortly thereafter. And then if you see Orioles at your feeders or, or coming and visiting or even in your backyard or hiking, a lot of times there are juvenile birds. And the juvenile birds, you know, everything is shaped the same and they look the same, but they're not nearly as bright. Um, they are much more subdued, but they have that oriole bill, that blackbird bill they have, uh, and they look usually kind of rat frazzled. You know, they're they're you may see some uh, down feathers sticking through here and there. Uh, if the parents are still here, you get to see this. <laughs> they're begging for food, and they will they while well, they will teach them to eat jelly, but they also, like I said, they love to uh, teach them to eat mealworms as well because they're having to teach them the tricks to survive and catching insects in the wild is all part of it. Remember, they don't sit at your feeder and eat all day long and all night long. They, they, they're they hunting uh, natural foods in the wild and that they'll be gone at, at periods. And so that's when people get you know worried about their birds and they think, where in the world are they? So they'll stick around. Um, uh, they right now in our area, they probably have eggs, uh, and it's about you know, two weeks to hatch, two weeks to fledge, you, you're a little longer than that. Uh, but once they start, you start seeing this site where they bring in their babies, uh, then it's not going to be that much longer. It, they, so the Oriole show is fairly short lived compared to others. Uh, and they'll bug out of here. And if you want to extend it or help them while they're here, uh, you can make that switch to mealworms, and that's a, a great deal. Um, that now, out west, you know, whenever they're, you're, you're talking about their their habitat and where they like to nest, if you it, it, the 
Bullocks, Oregon, in particular, they, they tend to prefer cottonwood trees, uh, and, and so they they uh, find areas, you know, and that's usually in wet areas. So if you live in a dry area, you might lose your your bullocks during the nesting season because your area might be too dry, might have to not have the trees that they want. If you do have them, that usually means your uh, your habitat nearby is something they want. Now the hooded Orioles are famous for nesting in palm trees. And, and they've actually expanded their nesting range um, in the last 150, 200 years uh, because people planting ornamental palm trees. And they like, that's where they like to make their nests. And they're really cool. They they actually poke a hole in the palm frond and then they'll string uh, a string through it. And they actually attach their their bag nest to the uh, to the palm fronds. And then the orchard oriole, this being a first year male, which confuses a lot of people, they like really wet areas. Um, we find them nesting in cottonwoods, but also willow uh, thickets are very, very popular for them. Even around uh, fairly small ponds, you can find orchard orioles nesting in there. So the, 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 the adult male, and the juvenile male, the, the first year male. So, but they are still can nest. So that's where they're gone. That's where your birds are right now. They're out what, doing what they're supposed to do. They're nesting. Uh, and they like said, they, if you live in an area with big, tall trees in our area, you may have luck getting uh, Baltimore's to stay in your area because they do like big, tall sycamores and elms and oaks, several different trees. They really like wet areas. But I've seen them in old neighborhoods a lot with big old trees. So they may come all the way through, but you're going to lose them in July and they're going to start moving out. And then people will start calling us in August and they'll say, oh, my Orioles are back. Well, those are the northern migrants that are moving south and they'll pass by. And if you still have your Oriole feeders out, they'll hit it then. So but they're moving there on their way south then. So that's what Orioles do in the middle of summer. That was a good topic. People have been asking at the store here in the last few days about their Orioles. So I thought I'd give you an update on that. So uh, great idea for a program. Thanks for that. Send in more ideas for programs. Give us a like, give us a share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do and ring that bell, hit that bell button so you know when I'm going to be on next. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.